Nephros is a water technology company that sells water purification filters, mainly to medical centers, dialysis clinics, and healthcare facilities. The filters normally need to be replaced every six months, so it's a recurring revenue stream. You know, prior to COVID, the company was growing this recurring revenue stream at greater than 50% per year for the preceding three years. Uh, they hope to get back to those types of growth rates shortly. In addition to water to water filtration, the company recently launched the first of its kind portable water pathogen detection system that allows on-site water pathogen testing and rapid results. We're honored to have CEO Andy Astor with us today. As a reminder, if you have any questions during Andy's presentation, click the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen and we'll get to your questions after his formal presentation. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Ian. I am just going to get to my presentation here. And I believe, please tell me that you can see this now. I can see it. Excellent. Great. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, once again, Nephros, NEPH on NASDAQ. Um, market cap's running around 85, 95 million these days. Um, up about fourfold over the last three and a half years or so. Covered by B. Riley, FBR, Benchmark, and Maxim um, uh, in terms of our research and very, some very strong institutional holders. We're, we're a pretty illiquid stock, uh, just so that you know, we've got, we only trade about 10,000 shares a day. Um, uh, Ian tells me that that's, uh, that's a good thing. Um, I think it's it's not a terrible thing. It's um, uh, you know we are we we own, we have a we have a pretty low float, um, but patient investors can come in and um, uh, you know the the returns have have uh, spoken for themselves over the last couple of years, and I think we're just we're we're just getting started. Revenue wise, um, the first half of this year is twenty percent greater than last year, but more importantly, it's 20% greater than the year before as well. Um, 2020 was a, it was a cliff for us in Q2 um, during when COVID hit in 2020, um, but we did 5 million in 2021 and only four in the first half of the preceding two years, um, which I take as a very good sign. Pre-COVID, as Ian said, uh, 15 consecutive quarters of growth over 60, uh, averaging over 60%. And what I am calling post-COVID, although we're not really out of the woods yet, we've got two consecutive growth quarters, meaning Q1 and Q2 of 2021, uh, averaging 25% between the two of them. Um, strong management team that I'll briefly touch on uh, during the presentation. And we've been together for the most part for a fairly long time. It's none of our first rodeos. This is a, uh, um, not, a not a junior management team uh, in any sense of the word. And I feel um, quite strong. As you'll see, the company in terms of the market opportunity is designed um, to have multiple growth engines and to be constantly innovating new product lines. And I'll explain how we think about that in just a minute. Cap structure wise, very, very simple. We've got, as of the end of June, we had eight and a, almost eight and a half million in cash. Um, that hadn't changed much over the last um, few quarters, partially because we watch our pennies carefully and partially because some warrants expired uh, at the, uh, in, the, in Q2. And so we got a little bit of extra cash from that uh, as they were exercised. Uh, got about 10 million shares outstanding, 12 million fully diluted, and that's kind of a very high-level view of the company. There's three business segments that we report on in our 10Qs and 10Ks, water filtration, pathogen detection, and HDF dialysis. And I apologize for the very busy slide um, you're, you're very welcome to read it, but what I'll do is really talk about what this slide represents um, and uh, also let you know that um, we, are, we will be releasing an entirely new uh, uh, corporate deck starting in the uh, early Q4. In water filtration, we really target three markets. Um, all of them are what I, what I call point of use filters. Um, 
These are water filters, ultra filters that um, protect patients. These are about 90% of what we sell our medical products. Um, we protect patients from infections um, where they touch their water. So at sinks, at showers, at ice machines, um, we are protecting patients from getting sick and, and in, in some cases from dying from uh, water, particularly focused on immunocompromised patients. So in water filtration, the first target market is hospital infection control, where we have these point of use filters that I've described. That's about 70% of our business. About 20% of our business, meaning our revenue, is in dialysis clinics and in di portable and home dialysis products, the ultra filtration that takes place inside the machine, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, in the water that's feeding to the machine to ensure that the dialysis machine is delivering ultra pure water to the patient. Again, the same medical te uh, filter technology that is in the infection control, but uh, it, these filters are targeted at dialysis clinics, and that's about 20%. And then about 10% of our business comes from commercial water filtration, where we're not using the same medical technology. We're using more traditional, more cost-efficient, um, frankly, more commoditized carbon filters and some pretty innovative methods to uh, prevent and remove scale uh, and uh, bacteria in certain circumstances from water. So 70, 20, 10% um, uh, for those three areas, all in water filtration. In the pathogen detection, the second column, it's a brand new area. The um, uh, revenue is just beginning. It's, um, I think we've done um, a little under $100,000 this year, as opposed to uh, 5 million in the first half of the year for water filtration. The pathogen detection area is, is pretty exciting for us. With filters, you know, the, the customers you're serving are know they have a problem or know they could have a problem. And so they put filters on to avoid the problem. With pathogen detection, we're doing the water testing before they know they have a problem. So we're moving up in the thought process up in the food chain of um, uh, waterborne pathogens. And what we provide is something that, as Ian mentioned, is a unique offering. It is a portable, real-time qPCR-based uh, mechanism that not only tells you whether you have a particular bug such as Legionella, but actually 15 different bugs, meaning bacteria or viruses, all simultaneously in a product that we call Pluripath. Um, there's a third business segment, uh, which is a relaunch of, um, as you can see, it's called HDF dialysis. And it's a relaunch of a technology that Nephros was founded to develop 25 years ago um, which was commercially unsuccessful when it came out a number of years ago. And we are trying to relaunch that with a, a new ge a next generation product. Going back over this very busy slide, water filtration, close to 100% of our revenue, pathogen detection, new business. We expect it to grow quickly and it's beginning to show signs of life right now. And HDF dialysis, a new business that we will be uh, launching late 2021, early 2022, assume, uh, as soon as we get um, 510K clearance from the FDA. Just a quick look at our revenues for the last four years. Um, as you can see, we've, um, we have year-on-year -year growth, as we've talked about already, this is the second time, of about of a little over 60% for 15 consecutive quarters ending here in 20, uh, Q1 of 2020. Then there's the cliff that we saw from COVID, sorry, the cliff that we saw from COVID. And, and really the cliff from COVID was, was two things. It was the ability to get new customers, which are an important part of our growth. 
And it was also the elimination, frankly, of, of a whole category of our business in hospitals, which is called emergency response. I want to talk about that for just a second to make sure it's clear to everybody. 70% or so of our filter, of our medical filter business is what I call proactive, which is, as Ian talked about, a recurring revenue model. Every three or six or sometimes 12 months, um, hospitals and dialysis clinics have to reorder these filters. They behave kind of like a subscription. Um, but about 15 or 20% of our business is there's an outbreak of Legionella or there's an outbreak of Pseudomonas. So there's an outbreak of some other bacteria. And on an emergency response basis, we get called in to close those, uh, to, to fix the water uh, in a particular wing of a hospital or something like that. Um, that business kind of went away last year. And it's it was interesting because we didn't understand why at first, but it turns out that the testing of water for Legionella and for other bacteria simply went away during the COVID uh, world, even though it's required, even though that testing is required, um, it, there was only one fire burning and it was COVID. Um, and so that is the, 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 the reason for the uh, revenue downturn in uh, Q2 of last year. You can see that we've steadily built back up. And even in Q2 of uh, 2021, the last line here, the last bar here, uh, which is quarter over quarter shrink, it is actually a growth year on year, which is how we measure our growth and, and have consistently for a long time. Even with that reduction, our, our compounded annual growth rate in revenue is 35%. And um, we're very, very bullish on, um, on where we go from here. As I mentioned, I'm uh, Andy Astor, the president and CEO. Uh, I come out of mostly the software technology background. I've been in uh, founder and CEO and president of several companies. Um, uh, one of them is the largest uh, open source database company specializing in Postgres today. The other one was the second largest of that category and was uh, acquired a couple of years ago by Amazon. Um, but I bring with me to this, uh, to the fore, three, uh, frankly, world-class scientists slash engineers, Darren Evans, who's the former CEO of Nephros, um, uh, is now our science advisor and the CEO of that HDF dialysis uh, component that I talked about earlier. We have Mike Millman, the VP of Research and Development, trained at Stryker and uh, is the longest tenured member of our leadership team. And Dr. Kimothy Smith, our newest member of the leadership team, runs our pathogen detection group. On the commercial side, we also are similarly quite strong with Wes Lobo, recently announced chief commercial officer, very strong in the water business from uh, both Watts Water and Xylem Water, where he spent 20 years uh, Shane Sullivan, who is our second longest tenured, he's been with us for about 10 years. Um, that, uh, that number is, uh, is outdated in the box. Um, and Greg Lucas, uh, who is the president of our commercial water systems, he was the founder and owner of Aether Water Systems, which we acquired at the end of 2018. And then Vishan Thomas, who runs our quality and regulatory organization, has also been around the block uh, quite a bit on the um, uh, medical product side and is uh, driving our quality and regulatory. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll, I'll move pretty quickly through the details of the, <clears throat> excuse me, through the details of the, um, each of these three areas, but I do want to give you just a picture, particularly in the medical uh, water filtration, what that looks like. The filters are in the back, in the center, in the back there. And these are actual filters that we remo were removed from a hospital after six months. The water that was coming out of those filters is shown on the right. The water that is retained in the filters with a simple back flush is shown on the left. So this is actually what tap water concentrated over a few months looks like. Um, and it's uh, what we do for a living. How we do it is with the smallest pore size 
uh, in the uh, in the world today <clears throat> for for this purpose. We conventional filters from our competitors are typically a 0.2 micron or 200 nanometers pore size, which takes out most bacteria and uh, lets, but does let some through and does it, and for the most part lets viruses and endotoxins, which can cause illness, uh, get through without stopping. Nephros filters have a five nanometer as opposed to 200 nanometer pore size. They stop all bacteria, viruses, endotoxins, where, you know, it's very simple. Our pore size is 40 times smaller than conventional filters. <clears throat> now, what you'd expect with a pore size that small is that the flow rate of the filter would be worse uh, than a, the flow rate through a larger pore size. You know, if you've got a colander, the water flows through faster than it does if you've got a, a tea strainer, for example. <clears throat> but because of the design of our uh, filters, we actually present much more surface area to the water and therefore have the same or even better flow rates. Um, and because of the design as well of the hollow fibers in our filters, our filter life is two to three times better than other products on the market. And hospitals measure the cost of their filters and dialysis clinics measure the cost of their filters in terms of cost per month. And our cost per month is the same as, um, uh, as the products that I would argue are less, uh, are less strong competitors on the market today. <clears throat> so that's a story, the story of the medical filters. In the commercial filters, you know, we have um, here the carbon block filter, which reduces chlorine and um, improves taste and odor. But um, we also have more sophisticated filters, um, such as the scale control filter, which uses a proprietary technology to um, um, drastically reduce and sometimes eliminate the scale and that we've all seen, particularly in coffee machines. These are filters that are focused on the food and beverage and hospitality industries and take, uh, uh, take improve the taste and odor and, and improve the scale control and the bacteria control of uh, water in these settings. On the pathogen detection front, I mentioned that we have a portable system. This, what you're looking at is a Pelican case, a rollerboard uh, Pelican case that can be checked on an airplane. And everything that you need to do the testing is in that Pelican case. And that is something that we sell, but the money, the, the recurring revenue in this business is really in the sample strips, which perform 15 separate uh, uh, qPCR uh, assays looking at the DNA and the RNA uh, in the in a water sample in about an hour. And um, the um, sorry, the gross margin of this area was about the same as the water filter area, which is about fifty five to sixty percent. But in July, just a couple of months ago, we announced the acquisition of a very small company uh, called Generation. And Generation is a, um, is, is a, as I said, a very small company that we acquired for $1.2 million that makes the, that, that has the formulas for the assays that we were um, using. In other words, they were our supplier. And while we were also developing our own assays, we've now bought the supply, the supply chain of these assays. Um, we have vertically integrated them and driven our gross margin significantly higher, i.e. our cost of goods sold significantly lower. So Pluripath is our primary product here. It is, as I said, the, it gives the ability to do many assays uh, as opposed to just one assay for Legionella in real time, less than an hour, on site using a rollerboard suitcase um, 
and it's getting a lot of interest in the marketplace. We also have two additional products, one of which is now available as a service called Sequipath, which answers a different question. The question that Pluripath answers, the one that you saw just a moment ago, is do I have any of these bacteria in the water? What Sequipath does is processes 96 samples at once and answers the question, what's in the water? Um, it is able to recognize over 20,000 different bacteria and um, very useful, not just in medical facilities, but in commercial facilities of, you know, how's the water uh, quality to a, an office park, for example. Um, this is a, a newer product than Pluripath. Um, it is, uh, you know, emergent at best, but it is something that we think has some, uh, some real potential for legs. And then um, our newest product, the Dialopath product, is for dialysis clinics to test for what's called gram-negative bacteria in water, which can make particularly dialysis patients sick. And it is, uh, we think it will have the ability to replace the limulus amoebocyte lysate test, which A, is more expensive, but uh, also requires the destruction of the horseshoe crab population of the planet. And uh, we're hoping that we are able to replace that test with the dialopath tests uh, over time and remove that, uh, that serious threat, by the way, to the, uh, to the uh, horseshoe crab species. I mentioned that we also have a um, uh, sort of a legacy business. Uh, we call it specialty renal products. I listed it earlier as HDF dialysis. And in a, in a, in a nutshell, Nephros was originally founded 25 years ago to build this product. Um, it took, a, um, frankly, over $100 million and it took, uh, was lost. And it took about 15 years to get it approved by the FDA. And even though it was approved, it, um, the, the way that the company at that time built it uh, was, was not a strong, was not a successful uh, uh, implementation. Um, we put it on the back burner. We pivoted the company to the uh, water filtration and pathogen detection businesses that I've talked about and are now relaunching um, specialty renal products uh, with the same technology, but a dramatically simplified version of it that we think will be an interesting strategic asset for us. We didn't want to just let it let it die, frankly. Um, we, we have put it into a private entity called Specialty Renal Products inside the public entity and raised money for it uh, separately. And it will have to stand on its own two feet. It's not, you know, it, it's considered to be a standalone uh, uh, offshoot of Nephros. So once again, um, that that's pretty much our our story. We've uh, um, this is this slide is nothing more than a, a copy of the of the the one at the beginning. So I won't reread it to you. But again, the symbol is NEPH. And I will open it up for questions from the audience. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Um, I want to remind the participants, if you have any uh, questions, to please uh, click on the Q&A button and, and uh, let us know your questions. Um, first question is, what's the market opportunity by segment? Well. The water filtration segment is one that we understand pretty well. And I'll tell you that they, I mentioned that there are three markets there. There's the hospital, infection control, dialysis, and commercial. The infection control is somewhere around a half a billion dollars. And um, the, the, uh, the TAM, the, um, the total addressable market. Today, the market is probably only half of that or maybe even smaller. Um, and there is a leader in that area, which is Paul Medical, 
uh, subsidiary of, uh, of Danaher. We are the number two there, but the market itself is growing very quickly. So that's a half a billion. The dialysis clinic and portable market is somewhere between 50 and $100 million. It's smaller, but we think we have a stronger ability to dominate overall uh, that market since no one else is really addressing it head on the way we are. And then the commercial market, frankly, is billions of dollars, but that's I don't like it when other companies tell me that their market is unlimited, it's billions of dollars. We have to find a, a very narrow area. Um, there's probably a four or five billion dollar market just in hospitality um, uh, and um, quick service restaurants for water filtration. I want to, I, as we mature that business, I want to understand it more deeply and shrink the addressable market so that we can actually have um, a meaningful part of it. It's uh, uh, philosophically, I, it, it's, it doesn't make sense for a microcap company to go over and go after a, a five or $10 billion market um, because you've got, you've got no chance. On the um, pathogen detection, in a similar situation, there's an $8 billion water testing global market. But it, once again, it, that's too big for us to say, we're gonna go after an $8 billion market. Um, we don't know yet how big the on-site um, PCR based market is, but it's a significant size. It's certainly in the hundreds of millions of dollars and it is potentially in the low billions. And then finally on the HDF, um, another, another multi-hundred million dollar business, um, what the, what the HDF product does that is interesting and different than anyone else is it converts existing dialysis machines, HD machines, to do HDF dialysis, which is a, some would argue, a better modality of dialysis where patients feel better and for a very small investment and, um, and just recurring disposables, you can convert an HD machine, which costs tens of thousands of dollars to be an HDF machine without replacing the whole machine. So, um, uh, you know, half a billion to a billion dollars on that one. So who are your customers for the pathogen detection system? There's, there's a couple of categories. First of all, and these are uh, the ones that we've been talking about for a couple of years now, um, there are hospitals, there are um, uh, senior living facilities, there are rehab centers, all the places where patients live need to have their water tested and that, uh, you know, they need to have water management plans that is driven by, um, uh, met by CMS and implemented by the Joint Commission and we're a very important part, I think, of that world. In addition, we think we can go after the centralized laboratories, which are currently where, where water samples from hospitals are sent to for spread culture plate analysis, you know, basically a Petri dish analysis, um, because increasingly PCR technology is used um, as you know, it used to be that culture plates were the gold standard. That is no longer true. It is now culture plates and PCR as well. Um, so that is a, that's an additional market that we haven't talked about much, but uh, that I'm, we're feeling uh, pretty strongly about. So um, when you um, sell your um, medical filtering systems, I assume that they're basically installed at the point of delivery. So like at a sink or something like that. Yes, that's correct. The, um, the, 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 the infection control filters are pretty much a hundred percent of them are either at sinks, showers or ice machines. And um, how many points of delivery or how many systems could you potentially sell into like a hospital? Do they like, does the hospital try to like, put one on every 
uh, delivery point or do they focus on certain areas of the hospital? Or? Yeah, some do, but most don't. Most, you, these filters are expensive. You know, it's 50 bucks a month to, to have these filters on, on uh, for each filter or two bucks a day. Um, and so it's, and Legionella is not dangerous. Uh, Pseudomonas is not dangerous for most of us, but it is very uh, dangerous for immune compromised patients. So figure that's 25, 30% of the beds in a hospital. And that's really, if you, if you wanna um, quantify the number of beds that we can service, think of it as about 25% of the beds in a hospital. But there, we have hospitals, you know, I, I'm, I live in Chicago. Um, we have hospitals here that, uh, where we've got hundreds of filters in and thousands in an emergency basis when there's outbreaks. And that's, we have that all over the country. We, we're in, uh, uh, in some of the, the it, it happens that the, the best hospitals also are the biggest users of our filters because they are very proactive in all in every aspect of healthcare delivery, um, and so we're uh, we're we're in many hospitals that are in uh, uh, that have hundreds of filters. How are the healthcare filters currently being sold? Is it direct or through distributors, partners? Thanks for asking. Um, it's about 85, 90 percent through partners. We partner with water treatment companies that um, that take care of the water quality in hospitals and we have, we wholesale through them and they've got a new revenue stream by partnering with us, which by the way, is not available from, um, uh, from Paul. They, they pretty much only sell direct and, uh, and, and keep, all, keep all that margin. So does that mean you're pretty much the only solution that those companies can sell or is, are there other competitors or? There's competitors, but uh, we're by far the largest of the of the competitors out there. Okay. Um, and we're we don't have any competitors with the technology with the tech, sorry, with the technology with the specifications that I talked about earlier. Okay. So it sounds like your your solution is technically better in terms of filtering than than your competition, correct? I, I if I if I owned a hospital, I would buy Nephros. <laughs> Uh, just looking through our questions. Um, so one of the questioners or listeners asked, uh, I was kind of surprised to see the low head count in the company um, and was wondering if, you know, Nephros is trying to do too much. Um, uh, you know, it would be possible to grow faster if you're targeting fewer markets and maybe talk about why you know, you're targeting all the markets you are. Yeah, it's, it's a fair question. Um, our uh, thesis, if you will, is to build a company that can have a few, not many, but a few $50 million bets, minimum $50 million revenue bets. And I've told you today about the five that we've chosen. Um, I don't plan on adding a sixth or an eighth or a twelfth. Um, I think we've got, we've been pursuing these five since we started the company. Not all of them are going to pan out the way we expect them to. Some of them are going to overachieve. Some of them maybe will underachieve. Um, some of them will grow faster. Some will grow slower. And um, the, the structure of this company has, is from, from the, uh, the, the turnaround uh, that we put in place four or five years ago, it has always been to have a small handful of markets that we can pursue so that we don't have all our eggs in one basket, but don't aren't trying to do too much, too many things either. Is there any potential legislation requiring water testing that could positively impact your business? Yeah, it, it doesn't require water testing. Um, I want to be clear, I don't want to mislead anybody, but um, there is a guideline that first came out in 2015 and then was adap adopted into, um, uh, hospi um, it, into hospital requirements from CMS 
in 2017. That is being updated right now and will go into effect with an updated version in 2022. And what this requirement, it's all based on ASHRAE 188 if you wanna look it up. And what this requires is that every hospital, every healthcare facility that services patients in the United States, which is about 20,000, must have a water management plan. The water management plan must, must, un, uh, must have a logical, um, a logical design for protecting patients and for keeping the bacterial count of, uh, of pathogens low, low, you know, acceptably low and may be validated with testing. So that's the language of, of, the, uh, of the, 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 um, the regulation. In practice, that means everybody tests. Um, so it's not a requirement, but testing is part of the validation. Um, and, and, um, and so the, the short answer is, we think those requirements from the uh, from from the CMS guidelines uh, are very much driving uh, the need for testing and will increase the size of the market. How do you think about the rate of revenue growth versus getting to profitability? Um, I'm glad you asked the question. Thank you for asking it. I think that it differs depending on which of the three business segments you're talking about. I think the water filtration business, which is close to 100% of our revenue, we now owe the, uh, the shareholders profitability there, and we need to work on that. Um, is that next quarter, next year? I'm, we're not talking about that, but it's soon we recognize our responsibility to get that profitable. We have, by the way, had one profitable quarter, fully loaded every all the, the, the costs uh, included, we did have a profitable quarter in Q4 of 2019. And then of course the pandemic hit in Q1 of 2020. Um, so we're shooting at that. We're not shooting for profitability right now for pathogen detection, and we're not shooting for profitability right now for HDF. And what will that mean to the consolidated profitability? I don't know. But for a sophisticated investor looking at Nephros, I think the way to think about profitability is by business segment. And the first place you should be looking is water filtration. Um, a lot of companies are having issues with supply chain. Can you talk about your supply chain and how it might be challenging right now? I, I can. And I'm very pleased to say that we have no challenges. Um, when the pandemic hit, we we saw the potential for supply chain uh, con constriction. And in um, February of 2020, we, we said, pedal to the metal, make as much as you can. And let's just put a lot of stock on our, um, on our shelves. And our, I think our inventory went up 30% uh, while our sales went down. Um, and that was just fine because it made sure that we had plenty um, it turns out that we don't have any supply chain challenges at all, um, and um, our our you know our back orders are well under one percent, probably under half a percent. Okay, thank you, Andy. Appreciate the time. You're welcome. Thank you, Ian. Great uh, great questions. Thank you, everybody, and have a good day. Thank you.